we are back at the bench. We're heading into the end of July now. Weather has been a little more tolerable than it was not so long ago. Man, we had some heat. I know other parts of the country are getting hit with it too. Uh, my heart goes out to you guys. I, I'm not a summer person. I don't like heat. I like fall, winter, you know. Um, that's just my thing. Anyway, so um, what do we got out here today, right? We got this Swede, you know. Uh, it's a Swede frame back. And um, this thing shaves like a demon, you know. And there are a couple reasons for it. One, uh, steel in, in these Swedish razors is, well, it's Swedish steel. <laughs> um, it's a very high quality steel. Um, it's forged, it's very hard, and it has uh, fantastic wear resistance. So it um, takes you longer to get an edge sometimes. And, um, but once you get an edge, it's inclined to hold that edge uh, for a very long time. You know, uh, this particular one, um, you know, is an Engstrom. You know, uh, these don't go for prices like, you know, with, um, you know, some of the others out there. Helgestrands, Helgies, you know, everyone's like crazy for Helgies. Oh, I got to have like a Mark uh, 999. So it's like, you know, uh, a foot wide and uh, comes in uh, piano key scales and costs, you know, $5,000. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Th those razors are beautiful. The Mark 32s, 33s. Um, I personally would like to get a Mark 10. I think they're like a half hollow. Um, most of them are honed up a lot, but if you can get one with a full blade, they're still expensive, but they're very pretty. Um, I don't really care about scale materials, so the black plastic ones, I I'm cool with that. Anyway, so <clears throat> those aren't frame backs. This is a frame back. Uh, frame backs come many different ways you'll see a lot of them have brass or what looks like copper back here on the spine it's basically the blade here this let me get it, this guy um this right here this is your blade right um this is a separate piece of steel the back the tang you know the tail and the spine is another piece of metal and this is essentially shoved up into here and then they hammer it down and they make it one and um, I don't know if it's just press fit or forged. I, I don't know. But um, I never had one come loose. Um, sometimes there's like a, a little cool tray or something like that where there's a screw in the end where you can pull the blade out. That's another beast completely. Um, these are fixed. The, uh, the spine is fixed. You see the ones with the brass thing on the back, that tubing. Sometimes that tubing can slide off. Um, this is not like that. This is just basically a one-piece tank. But the blade, you can see, is... I don't know how well you can really see. But um, it, it's like a wedge. <laughs> Essentially, it is a wedge. But it's really thin. So you have the benefits of, like, say, some of the benefits, some of the theoretical benefits of a full hollow or a hollow grind, and um, some of the theoretical benefits of a wedge. What that might be is you have, like, a, a thinner blade, and you have a very, very stiff blade. There's like no flex in these things, all right? And no flex and um, stupid sharp edges, uh, for me, anyway, for me, makes to, for a nice uh, honing and shaving experience. I mean, honing them is a little bit of a pain in the ass. People get them, they say things like, I don't know, I got a frame back and it doesn't seem to be performing as well as I expected. That's probably because you under honed it because you needed to put in two and three times the amount of work on your bevel setting. Um, yeah, no joke. These blades, these sweet blades, these will prove to you how much or how little you know about your feedback on the stone. So, anyway, I really like them. This one has like cheap, like sort of rubbery plastic scales. And, all right, so I, you know, it was inexpensive. I got it at a flea market or an antique shop or something out in the Midwest a long time ago, several years. And, um, yeah, I beat the hell out of it. Uh, I don't know if you can pick it up, but you know there, there, there's uh, engraving, you know, uh, etching rather on the blade. There, it's really the, the the camera doesn't really do well. Well, camera is it's my phone. <laughs> you can see anyway. So um, it's honed up a lot into it. So I'm missing blade dimension. So you know, I don't care about this. It's not a museum piece. It, it is what it is. It, it's a piece of history for sure. But I, I don't need to baby it. I, I can hone the snot out of it. If I hone it to a toothpick and I throw it out, I got my money out of it. I've hon I've shaved a bazillion times with this thing already. 
it's fantastic. Okay, whatever I spent on this, I got my money back and then some. So, yeah, you'll notice. No tape. I don't hone on tape with this thing. Uh, it's already honed up far enough. I don't want, like, a fatter bevel angle. Um, yeah, being again with the bevel angle thing people say it doesn't i just read it on, on facebook guy says oh it's been proven to not matter uh, proven by who how how did you prove it what is your scientific testing that proved that if the bevel angle didn't matter then why would they engineer it as specific oh, never mind it's just like <clears throat> i read stuff and I, there's only so many battles you can get into it's just it's not worth it you know uh, does it matter if it's 16 or 18 degrees eh, maybe maybe not but if it's like 20 22 degrees then that's something you want to consider that that's why it matters okay now a layer of tape on this for the most part isn't going to matter no okay unless i'm already at 19 degrees then I, i'm going to 20 it's like I'm, I'm making my shaving experience worse what am i going to do about it well you know in this case what i would do if i had that problem is i would tape the edge and then uh put this on like a dmt and then bring it down but i, I don't need to do that it's fine all right um yeah, it looks like it's got some kind of like lead wedge or something in here. I, I don't know. It, it Basically, it's a cheap presentation. It wasn't an expensive blade back when, uh, but it's still working really great. The date on the blade is 1874, you know, so um, if that's any indication about what we're talking about, then, you know, it's safe to say it's kind of old. Anyway, so um, this is that Ozuko, you know. I, I've been really working with this a lot. Uh, it was in, was it the last video? I don't know. <laughs> Someone uh, made a comment that he was uh, missing the, uh, what do you call it, the progression. I didn't do uh, too much honing on it. And then, uh, I said something, my response was something like, yeah, hey, don't worry about it, it'll come back. Well, here it is. Um, I got this, uh, th this is a really hard Tomo. Not, not really, really stupid hard, but it's hard you know it's really hard um compared to that which is a little bit softer all right so everything is relative um but this might actually be harder than i want for this stone um no nah, nah, i got some slurry coming up and it's not too terribly too difficult to to get it going <clears throat> I tell you the truth, it's right on the cusp. Because um, I know the stone, and I know I know what I want to do, right? Um, and and I know like what the balance of uh, stone uh, tomo versus base stone slurry, what I'm looking for, you know. Um, so I did want to go with a harder tomo because I wanted to bring up as much base stone as possible. You know, you're always going to get a little bit of mix from your tomo in there, though. It's never like this finite thing, you know. But, um, yeah, that sounds horrible, right? <laughs> I, I know the foam, like, as attenuated or whatever you want to call it, um, it's really overly sensitive to some types of uh, sounds <clears throat> that have a little bit higher pitch to it. So I know that when I put this in the editor, it's going to sound god-awful. Anyway, um, it's just not that bad in real life, folks. <laughs> Someone asked me about that once, and... It's like, yeah, you know, maybe it's just the electronics fooling you. Just saying. Anyway, so, uh, ooh, this is nice, okay? Um, the stone is very, very, very hard. The jury is still out on whether I would actually call it super hard, but it, it's really close to that zone. Um, You know, people who use the LV system that I don't subscribe to would probably say this is 5 plus with another couple of pluses after it or something like that. And I find that's usually because they underrated everything else or, you know, they just don't know what they're talking about. They just make stuff up. And there are some people out there that do understand what they're doing. I'm just saying there are people that don't. All right. Um, so you have to be careful. Plus, you know, what's hard to me, hard to you, hard to somebody else. I don't know. I've bought stones from most of the sellers that you can think of, and not everybody's on the same page with that. So what happens is you buy a stone from somebody, and you, let's say they said it's a five, for example, and then you tell them you want something hard. He says, look for a five plus, because now you know, you know, what, what their, their relative point is. Uh, what, what's no good is when you have someone who, 
uh, what is a five one day is a five plus another day is a five plus plus on a third day. That's no good. That'll make you nuts. There, there's like a couple of eBay people that do that. Well, they used to. A friend of mine in the UK just emailed me tonight. It tells me that the guy who got caught selling uh, counterfeit stamp stones is back or something with a new eBay ID. So be careful out there. All right. I took a look at the one stone, um, the the one listing. He sent me a link to it, and uh, yeah, it, it it's not straight. You know, um, to me, I, I see it as being bogus. Like right away. You know, people looking for a deal are probably going to be like, whoa, look at that. It's got stamps in a box. It's got a dollar bid on it. I think I'm going to go for it. And, um, you know, for a dollar, it's fine. But if you get caught into a bidding war and, like, you get possessed and obsessed, next thing you know, you just spent your mortgage on what effectively is a flagstone for your front yard. Yeah, that blows. So, um, as they used to say when I was in the forums early on, always deal with trusted sellers. real simple anyway um for those of you who are watching this you wish you had this stone okay i mean i have stones i've had a lot of stones i have a couple that i'll go to my grave with um this is an awesome piece man um it's like melted chocolate plus it's it's just very hard and it, it's got that almost glass-like thing going on, but there's still enough feeling in here to let you know it's a rock and not a plate of glass. It feels alive, okay? Um, it does have that super hard pushback where it's like, you know, with a stone, I like a little bit of give and take sometimes. So I'll go with a softer one. That's just like a mood-based thing. And, you know, for those of you who think I'm nuts and you don't know what I'm talking about right now, it's fine. Stick around. It'll make sense in about 10 years, 20 years. Um, but it, just take my word for it. Some days I want to work with a stone that just pushes back at me. That's what this is. Okay. Slightly softer stones give you a little bit of that, what they call a good sharpening feeling, where it's like a, a toggle back and forth. This is still a good sharpening feeling. Okay. But it's kind of like... What is it kind of like, Keith? It's it's kind of like wrestling a bull, <laughs> as opposed to like riding a thoroughbred. Um, it's wild. It's fun. Uh, feels daring. Um, what I know from working with this, and what I know from stones that feel like this when they're high quality, what you get is the ability to push slurry to a finer stage of breakdown. Anyway, back to this amazing stone. Super hard. And because it's super hard, uh, the amount of particles it releases back into the slurry as you're honing is minimal or negligible or non-existent. So what happens is the slurry that you've made that you're working with just continues to break down and break down and break down. If you have a high quality stone, Tomo, I should say, you make a high quality slurry. Okay, you have finishing grade stuff, you know, and um, then it breaks down, it breaks down, it breaks down, it gets finer, 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 finer it never gets new particles in so the particles in your slurry just continually get smaller and smaller at some point or another you hit the uh, you know point of uh, diminishing returns but what you wind up with a combination like this you wind up with like that super edge you know and you know I'll be the first to tell you not everybody wants it not everybody needs the shave with it not everybody needs to put the time in because it takes extra time and it is extra work you know um, just part of life you know do you need to do it no you don't need to do it you know uh, somebody just watched a video of mine it's like oh look at all those stones what do you need all those stones for you don't need those stones I just like them and I use them I show them to people but I'm not trying to tell you that you need to do this you know you need a couple of cents. Uh, you want to get a natural, get a J nat, get a couple of Nagura, and you go to town. And from there, you figure out what you want to do. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's no, nobody needs to do anything. Shaving is optional. The feeling here is just wickedly awesome. I was actually original when I when I started this up. I was going to start off using this, and sometimes I do use a soft Tomo first, and then go to another Tomo. No, I'm not saying you need to do that. I'm just saying sometimes I do. Um, why do I do that? Because I, I feel that um, an edge is the sum of its parts and uh, the changes I make have an effect. 
on everything as I go along and sometimes I feel I need a little bit of extra cutting power before I get to my super fine tomo and I just try and balance and juggle everything I go by feel I go like like what my guts tell me you know if my guts tell me hey grab that stone then I grab that stone I don't need a spreadsheet and I don't need empirical fucking data to uh, back up my decision anyway so anyway I don't know if you can tell I, I have a roll going on here do you see my undercut I'm trying to like slow down a little bit now but it's hard for me to slow down um, maybe if you had a better camera I could like shoot it faster and then bring it down that would be something to check out but I have to uh, there's a smile on the blade so I, I really do, I need to like start with the toe up a little bit, you know, and you see I got the undercut down here is good, right? But then if I want undercut at the toe, I'll show you no undercut at the toe. See, I'm, I'm, I don't have it right at the very tip, all right? So what I'll do is, see my roll up, okay. Um, Stone's not really thirsty. I just, I have the fan on, so there's a lot of air blowing around in here. Um, basically, the, the water that I put on here just, just pretty much stays uh, relative humidity if it's, you know, <clears throat> not really low. Um, the water doesn't really soak in or anything like that. Anyway, so, um, again, yeah, if you hone, you would love to hone on the stone. Um, I'm going to keep this a little while longer, I think. I'm going to be putting it into my Etsy shop because, well, maybe I'll take one of mine and trade it out. That's how good this is. I would contemplate that. It's, you know, I don't know, sometimes stones, I, 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 I trade them out. I do catch and release, and other times um, I just keep them for a really long time. Oh, yeah, so, you know, like I said, I, I hone to 8K. Um, a lot of times I'll only go 1.5K Shafton Pro, then 5K Shafton Pro, and then jump to Nagura. This particular time, uh, I wanted to go to 8K. A couple of reasons. One, sweet steel. I mean, it's a bitch, you know what I mean? Um, it's just got all this wear resistance. So the further along in the world of synths that I pushed it, it made it a little bit easier for me when I got up to uh, the naturals. Not to say that Stone couldn't handle it, it's just I didn't feel like dealing with it today. You know, I was uh, actually, I had 8K is a nice topic. You know, I did that big ass video that goes on for like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> hour and a half or something um, on 8Ks. Um, and I may have mentioned in there someplace about like what it's like for me to hone on an 8K. When I hone on 8K, my pressure is very much like it is on my finisher. In other words, almost none. All right, you, you see me honing here, and you might think that I'm. Um, I'm using more pressure than I am based on sounds or what you might think, but my pressure is extremely minimal. And on an AK, it, it's it's like finishing to me. I, I, I there's it's not no pressure because there's gravity, right? Gravity is always involved. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I would say it's like a hair more than weight of the blade. When I'm done finishing, when I get to the end of finishing on this, I am very much using just weight of the blade or less than weight of the blade, but that's still pressure too because if if the blade weighs an ounce and I'm letting it press down half an ounce of force, that's still pressure. Okay, Wait, I'm going to drop a picture in here right now. All right, so now you've seen, uh, that's my AK. That's this razor, right? On my AK, that's my Fuji 8K. All right, I did this an extended uh, number of laps. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to have to guess that I went about 45 laps on that stone. And I never usually ever go more than 20 on an 8K because I don't have to. But this particular, th these, you know, um, these Swedes, these frame backs from, um, what do you call it, um, Angstrom, couldn't think of the guy's name. Uh, they're very, very, very hard, so I need a lot more time on the stone. So if 20 is normal, then 40 is you know, <clears throat> normal for this. <laughs> 20 would be normal like, you know, for Sheffield. So there's that. I don't count, though. I go by feel. I'm just saying, based on time, I'm giving a guesstimate, you know. Um, 
and there should be no swarf. There's no swarf on, on my AKs ever. If I have swarf on my AK, I did something wrong. I either didn't finish my 5K or I, I lost my mind and used too much pressure on my uh, 8K. I, I just don't want that edge. I mean, other people are going to hone however they hone, but that's for me. That's, that's what I do. In fact, I use the 8K and the amount of swarf as a tell about how clean my previous work is. So anyway, so I do that work, and then I have a mirror polish, and then I go into my uh, Nagura thing. And eventually, I wind up down to Tomo Nagura. And um, when I start off each Nagura, I start off with a little bit more pressure than I ended the last stone with. But, you know, we're talking like real, real teensy-weensy bits of adjustment, okay? I, I, I notice that sometimes guys tend to think, you know, uh, you know, when I say use a little pressure, you know, they're, they're going to town on it, and that's not what I meant, okay? So I hesitate to uh, explain too much sometimes. But um, you can see I still got to, like, do a roll if I want to get up right to the very toe. Anyway, so um, you can't tell, but I can. I'm about done here. Um this edge is going to scream. It's just going to wipe whiskers off my face like windshield wipe. It takes water off a windshield. Um, it was good before, but I just bumped it up a notch. Um, everything is super smooth. My feedback is awesome. There's no bump release. You know, um, very happy with this. You know, uh, I could have probably hone this for another half an hour this steel will take the beating but I don't think I would gain a half an hour's worth of sharp out of it um, might be able to bump it a little bit but uh, now this, this is really this is for all intents and purposes absolutely done um, yeah, cross contamination is another topic I keep wanting to get into. It's like you know, it doesn't apply here really because I'm done. So all I'm doing actually is just wiping the blade off. But um, and when I'm going for 1.5k to 5k to 8k, all those jumps, right? Um, after 8k, I don't see it too much. But on the earlier stones, when I wipe off, I have a lot of swarf in the paper. I'll, I'll rinse and wipe several times. In fact, I might even rinse with soapy water and wipe a couple of times just to get the soap uh, in there. The surfacants will pull all of the uh, swarf up and out of the uh, striations. I honestly have to say that since I started doing that a long while ago, uh, that I noticed an improvement in uh, the way my edges looked when I was done honing. Fewer uh, rogue scratches and stuff like that. So anyway, that's something to think about. All right, um, other stuff that's going on here. Let me move this out of the way. Um, made some brushes this week. This is um, an insane brush, okay? Uh, the case, the handle, is a case from a uh, machine gun that is mounted in the nose of a famous aircraft, famous jet uh, fighting aircraft. Um, the plane's called an A-10 Warthog. The machine gun's called a GAU-8. This is a 30 millimeter round. It's cut down, okay? That's why this is a 40 millimeter knot, okay? That's how it fits in here. The, the full case is like this long. It's neck down to go to 30 millimeter for you know, like what you would call a bullet, except it's it's like, I don't know, it's like a missile. <laughs> anyway, so this is cut down, but this is like incredible. This weighs like nine ounces. You know, this 40 millimeter knot, that's like, look at the head on that thing. And here's the 30 mil in comparison. Like I use a 30 mil almost every day now. It, it, this is just like crazy. Anyway, so I made one of these. I made a couple of more. Um, thought it was pretty interesting uh, doing that. Um, another thing, just something going on. I uh, a barber bottle. I don't know. Someone asked me about it, so I figured I'd put it on camera. I um, That was Gonzo, by the way. He asked me about it because um, I mentioned it. Uh, this is uh, not the one that I posted a photo of. This is another one that I got took me like forever to clean it out but the, the trick the thing that gets me is like these ceramic uh like little nozzly things the pour spouts this is the first one i've done with a rubber stopper up until now i've only used cork drilling cork blows okay but getting rubber to fit 
is like Migraine City. So this was a total success, and I'm, I'm, I know it's, it's stupid, but I'm really proud of this. <laughs> and um, I don't even have anything to put in it yet. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. I have one already in the bathroom, but it's got witch hazel in it. I was thinking of filling it with this stuff for a couple of reasons. One, it's green, so it'll look cool. And two, I just started using it. Yes, it's a little tiny mirsol, right? Where did that come from? I, I got it from uh, my, my camera is like whatever. So, I tried these out. I may stick with the Mirasol. My face feels really good after using this, and it's um, peppermint. It's it's a it's it lasts like a nanosecond. It doesn't have like longevity. It doesn't stay with you. It doesn't project a lot. It, it, it's aftershave, folks. It's not a fragrance. It does exactly what I want. It tightens up my skin, disinfects, um, and, and it makes it feel really good. I, I don't think there's too much in it, but for some reason or another. This stuff made my face feel awesome when it was done. Actually, a little bit better than this, but this smells incredible. Um, but it still felt very good. Anyway, that's uh, what's going on there. Um, outside of that, that's it, right? That's all I got. We're done. <laughs> so um, it's still summertime, folks. We got another, I don't know, month and change on that heat nonsense. So um, anyway, get out doors and like have a lot of fun and um, make sure you spend some time honing throughout the summer season so when winter time comes your your chops are in place you know um nothing beats hanging out with the family at the uh the lake but you know don't ignore your honing uh make sure that when you're doing this stuff this this wet shaving honing thing make sure you're having fun avoid the people who are like basically full of shit and trying to bring pain and grief into your life and uh anyway that's it man talk to you soon see you later